Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my channel. I am Carolise. Thank you for joining me on this channel. If you haven't checked out my other videos, please go and do so at the end of this video because I have a lot of details for you on business analysis. So, today's video is going to be about interviewing, your interview skills, upping those interview skills so that you can have the confidence to go into the interview and knock it out, right? And kill it and like just impress your interviewers, okay? I'm gonna be sharing with you some strategies and how to make the best of your interviews, what to expect, how to prepare, and things like that. So don't go anywhere, stay to the end of this video. It's gonna be great, I'll be right back. interview skills today and we're going to be sharing some strategies on how you can make the best of your interview so you can have the best chance of landing that new business analyst job okay so one of the first things I would encourage you to do um, way before you get into the interview at least as a part of you preparing for a new job the same way you prepare your resume you make sure that you have your resume all um, done to be business analyst friendly and I've talked about this several times in my channel I do have a video here that you can go check out about your BA uh, interviewing skills I also have a sample BA resume on my website to so go to carolise.com and then go to templates and then download that sample BA resume and see how you could tweak your resume to be something like that, right? Or to use more business analyst friendly words so that you can have a better chance of actually being called for an interview, okay? So there's that. We also talked about um, some of the steps that you could take to break into business analysis. Here's an older video I did on that. Lots of valuable information in there, still useful today. Um, so those are some tricks and some tips that you should, should be doing. And those are the resources you could go and watch those videos um, go to my website and read some of the articles I have on how to break into business analysis and how to prepare for a business analyst interview. Now in this video, we're going to talk about the strategy that you should be applying. So like I was saying before, the way you design and you think through your resume, I want you to think through yourself as well. Like what are you good at? What are, what are you bringing to the table? Why should someone hire you for a business analyst job? Have you thought about that? Now, a lot of us are very modest, right? We don't want to like inflate ourselves and, you know, over, you know, value ourselves. Just, just be modest and be humble, which is a good trait to have. But at the same time, you have to recognize what you're good at. Now, you may be doing it so long and it's so natural to you that you don't realize that this is a skill, right? But I would encourage you to do a skills audit. Audit yourself. What are you good at? What's your strength, right? And you should be able to know this so you can know how to um, show that and highlight that in your interview. So, for example, are you good at troubleshooting? That's a skill. Being able to uncover problems, even from a technology perspective. Maybe you were a support person before and that's what you did or even just troubleshooting problems from people relationships, right? So just being able to troubleshoot could be a skill that you have that you don't even recognize in yourself as a skill. Maybe you have leadership skills. Maybe you don't exemplify that at work because you don't have the opportunity, but at church, you're in leadership roles, um, in your community, you're in leadership roles. So maybe you have leadership skills and those are skills that even though they're not applied to business analysis, they apply to you. And you should know that's a strength that you have, right? Maybe you have people skills. You're just good at having good conversations. You're very sociable. You know, you're easy to talk to. So that's a skill that you know, you should know that you have. You should audit yourself and highlight, write these things down. What are you good at? Write them all down. People skills, leadership skills, um, troubleshooting skills, um, support. Maybe you're just always helping different teams 
in your current job you support you provide support to different teams in terms of helping them understand certain things um providing documentation for certain things just just being there helping around right you're always busy trying to help other people whenever you see there's a need right? that's a skill that you should highlight collaboration you're always talking to different teams you're always talking to different people you're trying to bring everybody together to have a you know single understanding of what you're trying to come up with so you're talking to support you're talking to tech you're talking to your business your operations team like these are the things that you do you don't even realize it's a skill but you do have it. you're good at collaboration highlight that write that down as one of your skills um so there's some other like hardcore business analyst skills that you might be good at also like process improvement Maybe you're always improving your process, or if you're even not the one creating the process, maybe you are good at complying with the process. So people who work with regulatory bodies, right, who have to follow these strict compliance things, maybe they're good at making sure that these, you know, government regulations are being honored and being carried out so that there's the best chance for the organization to be successful and not break any rules, right? So maybe you're good at just complying with the process, right? Understanding it well enough to know if it's being broken or not. Um, you might be good at regulations too. That's a skill too. Maybe you work in an environment like healthcare, like um, banking, but there's so many regulations and they're written in such a way that it's hard to really, un the average person can't really understand them that easily, but you, you know the regulations, you know, at the back of your hand. You can understand them, you can explain them. You know if you're breaking them, you know how to comply with them. That's a skill. You have that skill. I like it, right? Maybe you're just good at quickly making an assessment, like you're on your toes. You can make decisions like that. Some situation presents itself, and you just make the right decision all the time. Like you just know the best way to navigate certain situations. That is also a skill. So assess yourself. Do a skills assessment, and don't don't play what comes naturally to you that you think everybody can do this. This is not really important. It is. Hello. Some people can't do what you do. Okay. So even if it's not applied to business analysis, it's applied to just how you operate. You need to be able to identify those skills that you have so you can speak to them later on. Now from a business analyst perspective, you need to also look at what you're not good at. Okay. So it's great. You know what you're good at. On the other side, look at what you're not good at, what you know you don't know, right? Like you're not, you haven't written any business requirements document before, so you know it's not a skill that you have. You know you've never written user stories. You know you don't understand Agile that well, right? You know that you don't have certain industry domain knowledge. So if you're going to IT, you're going to energy, you're going to whatever industry, you know you don't have that domain knowledge. You haven't worked in that field before, so you don't know it, right? That's, that's good to know that you don't know. You haven't worked on test plans. You haven't created a UAT test script. You don't know how to do the UAT. That's what you don't know. Write that down too. Um, you don't know how to do mockups. You don't know how to do wireframing. You don't know how to translate between the business needs and the technology team. Um, you don't know how to roll out a new process. So those are core business analysis things that you need to know that you don't know well. It doesn't mean that you're saying that you don't qualify. It doesn't mean that you're saying that, oh my God, I can't be a business analyst. It means that you're recognizing where you're weak. That way you know where to work on. Okay. So that's what you need to do as well. Now, as you understand what you're good at and you understand what you're not good at, you need to be able to craft a conversation or craft a messaging. That way you can still be honest of what you don't know, but highlight the things that you're great at. So in other words, while you're working on the things that you're weak on, praise yourself for the things that you're good at when you're in an interview, right? So if they ask you, you know, we need you to be able to do UAT testing, for example, and you're like, well, I've never worked um, as a business analyst, so I don't have a lot of extensive experience writing test cases, but I understand how to deal with people. I understand how uh, I can quickly get up to speed with the use case of why we're doing this, so I'm sure and I'll be able to craft that into a test case as long as I have an opportunity to do that. So I've done it before, but I feel confident I can be able to do that because I have all these people skills. I understand how to troubleshoot, blah, 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 blah. You see what I just did there? So I'm taking the fact that I don't know something. I'm being honest that I don't know it, but I'm explaining how my skills are transferable, 
how the things that I do know can help me in what I don't know. So it's that kind of way that if you know yourself and you know where your strengths are and you know where your weaknesses are, you can turn any conversation around to be in your benefit, <laughs> in your interview, right? So that's why you need to do this, this audit. The next thing you need to do is if you're a new business analyst, you don't have background experience, you haven't worked in the field, you can't go into an interview and try to wing it. Don't wing it, right? Plan, prepare, and execute. You plan, you prepare, you execute. So you know that you don't know something. You plan for plan around the thing that you don't know. So don't wait until you know everything because you'll never know everything. Don't wait until you've done an experience in, I don't know, Agile, and you've done all these courses, and you've done everything in the world to build your confidence. You're going to have to start scared. You're going to start scared. You're going to start while you're working on improving the things that you're weak on. Don't let that be um, a deterrent from going out there and applying for jobs anyway. So you're going to apply for jobs that you think you have a likelihood of getting, like jobs that are not um, like entry level jobs, jobs that are not requiring too much like experience or too much um, specialized skill or software. So you can find jobs that are more generic, like a generic business analyst, and that way you can try to get in there and learn. So don't wait to be perfect before you start applying. That's the point, right? So you're, you're gonna work on your weaknesses while you apply and while you do interviews, okay? So don't think you gotta finish one to start the other. No, just get out there and do it, okay? Um, so once you've done a skills audit, you know, once you're working on your weaknesses, you also need to prepare properly for the interview when you do get an interview. So of course you're gonna, if it's a virtual interview, you're gonna make sure you have a nice quiet area, that your background is not too busy, that you don't have like dogs barking and you know, sometimes you can't control the dogs because I have a dog that just yaps away sometimes. But as much as you can control the environment, try to. Um, and you're gonna make sure that you know the company. So you're gonna research the company, you're gonna find out about the people who are interviewing you, go check out their LinkedIn profile don't try to connect with them but just check out their LinkedIn profile see what they talk about understand their personalities as much as you can know the top leadership of the company you're going to be interviewed with so you can start dropping names and they can see you're already getting yourself familiarized with the environment um, you got to prepare for situational questions so yes you're going to prepare the typical questions and I'll go through some of those but you're also going to have to prepare for situational questions. Yes, okay. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also assess if they are a good fit for you because you are, they're assessing you if you should be a good fit for their environment. But you gotta make sure this is the right place for you to work too because you're gonna be spending the most of your time at a new job and you want to make sure that the culture fits with you and that you're not unhappy day two or day one of the job right so you got to assess if they're a good fit assess if the task that they want you to do is something you could be happy doing don't only look at your salary and your benefits package but look at the environment look at the type of work look at the projects that they're doing look at the things that they're coming out with and see if it's something that fits for you I'll give you a quick example I interviewed for a job a couple years ago and it wasn't a software company. I love software companies actually, but this one was a very data intensive um, software company. They were doing a lot of just data aggregation and it was, it was very, you know, I felt like I would be writing SQL queries every day. Like I just felt like I wouldn't be interacting with people. There wasn't a UI say for me to you know show my creative skills like all with mockups and stuff it was just hard data and they were just collecting the data and using it in certain other ways and sending it somewhere else but I just didn't enjoy that kind of environment so it was a great package it seemed like a great job but I didn't think I would be happy doing that every day so obviously it wasn't a fit for me right even though I wasn't fit for them so assess it you have choices in this world even if you feel like you, you know you really want to get a job you want to just get something get some money in your pocket to get started sometimes you might do that if you're just starting out maybe you don't have a choice but depends on where you are in your career growth maybe you can start in something you don't really love but then you go into something else it's an opening somewhere else and you get the experience that might be one option or if you feel like you know you're a little bit seasoned 
and you can make that choice or maybe your situation is that you're not really in dire need of the job <laughs> okay so you can make the best choice for you then do that like assess assess the job too because if you're unhappy it's not worth it sometimes right so um that's something to think about so as you go into your interview you need to um prepare right prepare for the questions you're going to get you're going to look at the job description and you're going to see what are they asking for they tell you the majority of what you need to know from the very job description so by the time you get into the interview you kind of know exactly what they expect from you anyway so you're already primed they gave you the information it's just for you to be analytical enough to take that information and make it apply to you and make sure that you are delivering what they're looking for i mean you're a business analyst come on you can do this <laughs> right so you take the job description you look at the tasks that they want you to do they itemize all of those tasks normally and you look at them and you, you do an analysis and you, you figure out okay this is something i could do there are some things that are hidden inside of these um um job descriptions that is not as obvious but like a trained eye like mine when i look at the job description i can see exactly what they're asking for as a matter of fact as a part of my um my consultations that i do sometimes i have clients that give me the job that they're interviewing for and i can look at the job description and say okay this is what they want <laughs> they want this 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 and this which is not stated so clearly in the job description but because i understand the job market i understand the business analysis role i understand what employees are looking for i help to provide that clarity to my clients when they're trying to go for a ba job so if you need that kind of help if you're going up for a job if you're going up for an interview and you you really want to knock it out of the park and you feel like you need some help with that schedule an appointment with me and i can work through that um and the appointment comes with a 15 minute um free consultation call just to make sure they understand your particular situation and then we craft uh, a strategy for you on the job you're trying to get so i do that among other types of consultations so if you go to carolise.com you click on schedule an appointment and you can see the different types of consultation sessions i provide to help you get started and be successful as a business analyst it's a very good career to have it's a high paying career it's leading it's turning towards a six-figure career um, many people in the field are already earning six figures it's a middle management job so you really you manage yourself you don't often have direct reports and so there's lots of benefits to becoming a business analyst so if i can help you get there that that's a, a service you can take advantage of now let's talk about the interview questions so you have your standard get to know you questions right and then you have job specific questions and then you have your situational questions and then you have your culture fit questions those are the four categories i put them in so an example of get to know you questions are you know tell me about a time um at whatever company you were before so i want to know about your last experience right or um tell me more about yourself which is a classic one everybody asks that. tell me more about yourself you got to go through your history your education your experience blah 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 um why are you looking for a new job is another popular one what is your salary expectation now this one is normally asked before the main interview so it's asked at the initial conversation with the recruiter or with the um the assistant to the hiring manager like normally when you get into the real interview, they're focused on your skills and your fit as opposed to your salary. So salary happens at the beginning so that they can figure out if you if they even can afford you. Or you can figure out if they even are worth their time. And then that's done with and you, you move on to the real interview to see if you're a fit. Now, at the end of that interview, then you may go back to salary because you might need to negotiate a salary because now that they have, they have decided that you are the candidate, now you have all the leverage to negotiate your salary negotiate any vacation days that you want to take like you can go back and forth there and make sure you're getting a good deal right but normally the salary is just mentioned like the range is mentioned up front you go through all the interview steps and then at the end if they make an offer that's when you really narrow down and complete the whole salary conversation all right then you got your job specific questions so this is where they go hardcore on the business analysis 
um, process and what you would bring to the table as a business analyst. And this is where you need to shine. This is where you need to show that you are the person. Like, you know your stuff. And if the things that you don't know, the things that you're weak on, this is where you're going to, um, if you have to mention them, you do, but then you're going to pivot into your strengths, right? So you always want to end on what you're good at. That's why it's good to know what you are good at. That's why you're going to do that audit I talked about in the beginning. So questions like, what kind of documents have you created, right? Uh, what deliverables have you been able to produce? Um, projects you've worked on in the past, how technical you are. And this is a question that people get very confused about. Like when they ask you, how technical are you? You don't even know what to answer. But typically what they're asking for is how are you able to translate from the business, which is the generic, to the technical, which is the detail. So in other words, you don't have to be a programmer to say that you're technical. You can say that you haven't written code, right? But you understand what it takes to make that code and you can translate from the business requirements into a format that can be easily translated into code. Right, so that's really what they're trying to ask for. You can also mention the fact that you know a lot of software tools, like if you know Jira, if you know different tools for markup, you can, you can mention anything to do with technology here and how quickly you're able to adapt to new technology and learn new technology is not, it's not a challenge for you. So that's what how technical you are is really asking um, and it's, it should be an easy thing for you to answer, right? Um, which environment do you prefer to work in, Agile or Waterfall? Now, if you've never worked in Agile, don't say you've worked in Agile because you never worked in it before, right? Never, don't be lying, okay? But you can say you have never worked in Agile, but you understand the process, you've studied it, it's a part of the things that you're interested in, and so you'll be, you welcome working in Agile environment. But you also like Waterfall, and you've worked in Waterfall before, you've written requirements document, or if you haven't written anything, you just say you've, you, you understood both of them, you've studied them, um, and you do really safe on projects in either one of them because you, have, you feel very comfortable learning and growing in those environments or something like that, right? Don't take my word exactly for it. Uh, what kinds of tools do you use? You can mention Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Jira, Power BI, Tableau, whatever you've used, you can mention those. Um, what experience do you have with conducting UATs? You can talk about that. Um, describe how you would achieve alignment between business and you know IT, you can explain how you can do collaboration, you do walkthroughs, you explain things, you understand the use case, blah, 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 all that stuff. Then you have situational questions. These are the ones that people fear the most. They fear this one. And that's because you have to tell a story. Situational questions require you to have some kind of story to explain something. And at the end of that story, you need to be the star. It needs to be on account of your efforts. It needs to be because of what you did that they achieved some kind of positive result, right? So look at this one. Tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult stakeholder, right? So with that question, you're going to talk about the difficulty of the stakeholder, why they were difficult, what they were difficult about, and then you're going to explain what you did to turn that situation around. So you were able to, you know, you know, demonstrate something to them and add in some more value to the, the process or whatever. At the end of the story, that difficult stakeholder needs to become a positive, um, more pleasant stakeholder, need to be happy, and it needs to be because of your efforts. So every story you're telling is going to be a story about yourself and how you were able to help turn something from either negative to positive or positive to even more positive. So <laughs> you got to figure out these stories. You gotta figure out the stories because stories make you memorable. Stories leave a lasting impression on your interviewers. Stories um, help to explain the way you think, the way you work, what you're about, and that's what they'll remember. So you have to have these stories and you have to make sure these stories are making you shine at the end of it. Like never end on a down tail where the story ends badly and you didn't accomplish nothing. Like, no, why would you ever tell someone that story? Doesn't make sense. So yeah, you're gonna make sure that the stories that you tell are showing you in a very positive and good light. Other example would be like, describe a time when you had to steer a client towards a different course of action than the one that you they were set on, on going. Like you have to explain that. Like you have to explain how you change them around to going 
the way that you want them to go as opposed to what they plan to go. Um, another one like describe a time when you failed, right? How did you deal with the situation? So failures can be terrible, but you have to show how even with something as negative as a failure, you got some good out of it. Gotta think about that, okay? You gotta make sure at the end of the day, the stories that you tell leave you in a positive light. Another example, give an example of a time when you had to be relatively quick in coming to a decision. How were you able to think on your feet? How were you able to come up with a decision that was good quickly, right? So those are some situational questions that you must have you know, answers for that are going to be good for you. There will always be situational questions or almost always, in all the interviews I've done throughout my career, there's always at least one situational question. So you, you should prepare for these, have your stories ready for these and make sure that it always shows you in a good light. Now there are culture fit questions and the culture fit questions are more just to see if, you know, if you fit with their culture and the way that team already operates, how would you, how would you fit with that? So questions like, what do you do in your spare time? Just to find out more about you. What do you do in your spare time? Um, have you ever started some new, have you started some new hobbies since COVID-19, for example? What have you, what do you do on your, when you're not working? Like, things like that. It's just to figure out your culture. Um, you know, how far is the commute from where you are, from, you know, from the office to where you are. I mean, they may or may not ask questions like that because there are some regulations about what you can ask in interviews. Like, I don't think they can ask you about your marital status or age or um, children. I think there are some things that you can't ask. But the cultural fit questions are typically just going to be about you, how you, what is your um, activities outside of work, basically. All right. And then you always have questions for the interviewer. Right, so you make sure that you have questions. So you look at the job description and you can craft questions from that. You can also craft questions from just in general. One of the questions I like to ask is, you know, about the company culture. Like what's company culture like? Right, so you can ask those kind of generic questions and it gives the interviewer a chance to respond. Uh, and it shows that you thought about them enough to have questions. Right, so those are the tips i have for your business analyst interview and again i wish all of my followers to have lots of success in their business analyst journey if you're looking for a new job if you're trying to start into the career if you're already in a different job and you're trying to switch into business analysis i wish for you a lot of success i think there's a lot of value in the things i've been saying in my channel so please check out my other videos i have videos about doing a presentation interview, about the interview questions, about how to just basically answer um, simple questions that they'll ask at the beginning of the interview process. So there's a whole interview um, series that I've done. So go check those out um, either here on YouTube or you can check it on my, my website. I have some free courses on interviewing. So do that. Also check out my new book called the business analyst job market report it's going to tell you everything that the employers are looking for so all you need to do is be that <laughs> all you need to do is be what employers are looking for let's say i've made it so easy i mean i don't know if i was starting out my career i would have loved to have a person like me to help me right i, I never had this kind of help when i was starting out so i'm giving it to you and so you you really should take advantage of it, right? So there's a the book is called um, the Business Analyst Job Market Report. It's available on Amazon. It's also available on the link I'm going to put in the description. On Amazon, you just get the book. Um, there's printed paperback, and there is the Kindle version. But if you also buy it from the link I'll put, I could add um, some resources in there that you could also use to be helpful for your business analyst job journey, right? So. Lots of resources, lots of help. I'm making it all available to you guys, so please take advantage of that. And of course, if you need one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can book that on my website as well. So looking forward to that. Guys, go out there and do, okay? Go out there and apply for the jobs. Apply for the jobs, update your resume, go get it, go get it. It's time, go get it, go, go, go. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. <laughs>